I'm going to modify question 13 as well, specifically to help you out later on. Now, what you're going to do first and foremost is when the sun shines, okay, on the ground, all right, what it does is it makes a particular angle and its shadow will be a particular length. Now, what you can say this is, the tree is 32, basically 32 uh, meters high. It's 63 meters long. It's a right angle triangle. The next thing you gotta do is you have the opposite is 32, but the adjacent is 63. So, what you're gonna get here is this, guys, okay? You're gonna get tan theta equals 32 over 63. Theta, therefore, equals tan inverse 32 over 63. You put that into your calculator, what you get is the angle is 26 degrees and 26.93. Now, there's a problem with this here. It wants it to the nearest minute. So 26.93, what you can do here is you can press this button here and it'll tell you that it's 26 degrees 55 minutes, 48 seconds. It's exactly like time. 48 seconds, 55 minutes, 48 seconds is closer to 56 minutes. So you change it to 56. 26 degrees, 56 minutes. It's rare to be asked a minutes question these days, but they do happen. Please remember that the button that changes it for you is here. This button here will change it for you. This here, the button I'm clicking on the board right now. It changes at uh, normal decimals to degrees and minutes. Uh, to 26 degrees, 55 minutes, 48 seconds. It's exactly like time. 48 seconds is closer to one minute than it is to no minutes. So you round it up. Exactly like time. Okay? Now, guys, there's another question I'm going to ask on you, and it's an extension of this question that will help with your exam. There's a person. This person is two meters tall, okay, so he's around here somewhere. What is the length of his shadow? And his shadow is going to be not denoted in red. How do we do that? How would you do it this time, using that angle? You'd know that it's two meters, his shadow is X, but we know the angle. What's the angle? 26.93. Now this is what's called using using this is called using angles. It's not. I'm going to show you another way called similar triangles in a second. Now, guys, Kane, how'd you do this then? It's going to be tan, tan what? 26 degrees, point uh, nine three. That equals opposite, which is two adjacent, which is x. Bring the x up and bring the tan six twenty six point six three down. And what you're going to get is this, guys. You're going to get that this length is going to be uh, x is equal to 2 divided by tan 26.93. And what that turns out to be is 3.93 uh, meters. Okay? So, look, that's the shadow. What I want us to remember for your exam is this. I can give you information about a person's height. I can give you the length of the person's shadow. Yeah? When you get this length of shadow, what you're going to do is you're going to find out the angle. Okay? And what you're going to be asked to do is you're going to be asked to scale this up for a building. Okay? So you're going to be asked to scale it up for a building. Okay? And it's going to be the, uh, it's going to be the same angle. So the shadow of the building and the height of the building are in the same ratio. Okay? Now there's a second way of doing this. The second way of doing this is what's called similar triangles. Similar triangles basically mean if this is the height of the tree, okay, and this is the length of the tree. So this is the height of the tree is 32, the length of the tree is 63. Remember what similar triangles are, they're an enlargement of each other. If I say the person is 2 meters tall, and I want to know what is the length of his shadow. So that's the person's height. On the bottom in red is the shadow. Uh, in the green here is the tree. In the purple on the bottom is the tree's shadow. Okay? They're basically the same ratio. So how much smaller is this triangle than the big triangle? 
16 times smaller. This means that 63 will also be 16 times smaller. So if you divide 63 by uh, 63 by 16, you should get the same answer, 3.93. 3.94 sorry when you round it up okay so guys that one method you're going to be asked specifically one method you're going to use tan theta in that's when you're talking about angles the other method is called similar triangles which means you draw the two triangles and you scale them up and down as you need them is that okay everybody on board with that okay perfect all right uh, next question is uh, this one here. Okay guys, a group of students, shh, excuse me, a group of students wish to carry, calculate the height of the Millennium Tower Spire in Dublin. The spire stands on flat level ground. Maria, who is 1.72 meters tall, looks up at the top of the spire using a kilometer and records the angle of elevation of 60 degrees. Her feet are, shh, her feet are, sorry, her feet are 70 meters from the base of the spire. Ulton measures the circumference of the base of the spire. Calculate how Ulton's measurement will be used to calculate the height of the spire. All right, guys, look at this. I used to be in on O'Connor Street, Dublin. You'll realize that the spire is something like this. Big base, okay? And then I'm not going to draw, I'm going to sort of draw the scale. It just goes almost up out of the screen. Now, what you need to realize about this is that the peak of the spire, okay, and they're very, they're very, uh, they love to do this, the spire questions. The peak of the spire goes down through the center of the base of the circle, okay? Now, what Alton did was, Alton used, measured the circumference of the circle. So he measured around the base of the triangle. In doing this, he got L equals 2 pi r. He got L is equal to what, guys? What do you say the length of the circumference was? 7 out of 7. Connor Duggan. 7.07 is the length of the, the circumference of the bottom. Okay? Equals 2 pi multiplied by r. The radius, therefore, from here to here in r, r is 7.07 .07 divided by 2 pi. And what do we get when we do that? Divided by 2 oh, pi. It's going to be like 0. Uh, oh, so round off to 1.13. Kin. Okay. Now, lads, when we scale back now, okay, what they said was we know that that's 1.13. Now, if we were to draw this diagram, Explain how Alton's measurement will be used in the calculation of the spire. Okay, so this here is the spire, just drawn much more uh, thinly. Okay, the person here is 70 meters away. Okay, but the problem with that 70 meters is it doesn't include this distance here. So we have to add that on. So it's no longer going to be 70. So the answer to this question is, I'm going to write it out, uh, Ulton's measurement is used to find the radius of this, uh, it's used to find the radius of the base of the spire, spire, as this is the point uh, sorry, as the center of the spire is directly below the top, is directly below the top of the spire. Okay, guys. Now, draw a suitable diagram and calculate the height of the spire to the nearest meter using the measurements obtained by the students. Okay, so here's what happens. Okay, a suitable diagram. Now, when you use a clinometer, I'm going to tell you what a clinometer is. Now, I'll go back up there in a second. Sorry about that. We'll go back up there. Yeah. Angles, yeah. Okay. 
Now guys, uh, Calamander, if you haven't uh, seen one before, right? It's basically something, it basically can be represented by a protractor, okay? Now if the protractor is upside down, what happens is you leave one line going directly down, okay? And as you move the kilometer up, so let's say you want to go up 30 degrees, okay? Uh, I also need to do one other thing. Sorry about that. Okay, that's 90 degrees. I also need to draw a, a perpendicular line, okay? So currently you're looking flat. You're looking straight ahead with the clinometer. Now there's usually a weight attached to here to weigh, it's a string weight down. So when you're looking straight ahead, it points at 90 degrees. However, when you go up to, let's say, 30 degrees, yeah? See the way that's 30 degrees over the horizontal? That you'll see that the clinometer now reads 120, which is 30 away from where it was originally. That means you're looking up at a 30 degree angle. That's how the kilometer is used. Now guys, what's gonna happen here is the following. Okay? You can only use a clinometer at eye level. Okay? So she's at eye level and this the spire is all the way up here like this okay so what she's gonna do is it says that it says that she looks up to the top of the, sp the spire and what when she looks up at it using the clinometer it's how many degrees how many degrees does she look up 60 degrees okay and we know that her the distance from her to the center of the spire is now what 71.13 it's the 70 meters plus the radius, okay? Now, what we need to find out is, we're gonna find out what this height here is, X. Now, X isn't the height of the full, the full spire, but it's the height of the full spire, and, and all we have to do when we find that is add on her, her eye height, her height at eye level, okay? So what we're gonna do here is, we, we want the opposite, and we have the adjacent. How would you go about doing that? That's how would you do it? Tan. Tan. Tan what, Gavin? Tan 60 degrees equals x over 71.13. x therefore equals 71.13 tan 60. Okay? Put that into your calculator and what we should get is around 123.2 I think. Okay guys, excuse me. Uh, sorry, I'm in radium mode. If that doesn't come out for you, it means you're in the wrong setup. So you gotta set up, if it doesn't say D, make sure you're in degrees when you do it. Press equals again, 123.2. Now guys, 123.2 K meters. Now, that's not the full height, as I said before. That's only the height from her eye level upwards. So we gotta add on the 1.72. Add on the 1.72 and what do we get? Well it's gonna round up to 125 anyway, I can tell you that much. So we round up to 125 meters. That's how high the, the spire is. Now guys, can we now go on to number, the next one which is number 15? Okay, two students want to find the height of a church uh, spire in their locality. They have a kilometer for measuring the angle to the elevation, a hundred meter tape measure, the ground level, and they can get access to the interior of the church. They can get access to the interior of the church. Okay, explain how they can find the height of the church. Your answer should be illustrated on the diagram below. Show the points where you think they should take measure, write down the measurements they should take, and outline briefly how they could use the height of the church. Okay guys, so what I'm gonna do first and foremost is, I'm gonna do the sum first, then maybe the description, all right? So look at this. Okay guys, you're out here at point P, okay? You notice that you're not given any measurements whatsoever, okay? So what we're gonna say is, we have to, we're gonna walk, sorry, we're gonna walk at a point, we're gonna walk 60 meters into the, uh, into the foot of the church. Uh, you don't. Okay, so you're actually making up your own numbers for this. 
alright? And you will find that happens a lot. Now guys, you're, you're walking 50 me uh, 60 meters in, okay? You're going to take a measurement with the clinometer. Now, you should do what you did last time. You measured the circumference, okay? So give yourself a nice, easy measurement. Okay guys, so what I do in the test is, excuse me, what I do in the test is say, I want the easy number like, let's say two meters. Okay, now remember, circumference like last time is two pi r. So what I do is I multiply r is equal to two, and I tell them what my circumference is. So my circumference is gonna be two, multiply by two, multiply by pi. And what I'd say is, look, my circumference is 12.57. Uh, so you measure the circumference like you did in the last question, and you get 12.57. So this means when you work backwards to find your radius, your radius will be worth two. All right. So this now means that you're 62 meters away from the center of the the, the building. Is everybody still on board with that? Okay, guys. Now you go directly up and directly across. Using your clinometer, are you listening? Using your clinometer, you measure the angle theta. Theta. You're going to make up a value for theta. What would be a good value for theta? Yes. Just anything, 60 degrees as well maybe. Any, any degrees you want, you actually can't go wrong. So, so that's, what we get here is, what we're going to get is we want to calculate the height of the church, right? So what I'm actually doing here, more so than part A, I'm actually doing, I'm actually showing you the procedure to find the heights before we actually do it. I'm actually doing part B first, so to speak. Write down possible values for the measurement taken, then use them to find the height of the church. I'm gonna do part B first, then we're going to use our language to interpret our method and put it into part A. Okay, I'll tell you what I'm doing that in a second, all right? So look at this, guys. Okay, back to where we were. So look, tan theta equals, anybody? Uh, tan theta equals h over 60. You told me that theta is equal to whatever angle you want. 45 degrees, let's say. Okay. Tan theta equals 45 degrees. Okay. Now, guys, what's going to happen here is tan 45. Okay, guys. Now, tan 45 is 1. 1 equals h over 60 cross multiply h equals 60. This means that the height of the church is 60 meters tall. Now what they want us to do is explain how they could find the height of the church. What did we do first? Okay so what we did first was we got to explain this in a uh, sorry in okay there it is there right stop a certain distance in front of the church. Stop a certain distance from the church using a kilometer. Measure the angle of sorry, measure the angle of uh, elevation to the top of the church. Okay. Measure the uh, measure angle at top of the, to the top of the church. Then, using a tape measure, you can yeah. Sorry. Using a kilometer. The the protractor method from earlier. So using a kilometer, measure the angle of elevation to the top of the church. Using a tape measure, you can then measure your distance. You can then measure distance to the the uh, the wall of the building. Okay. If you can get inside, which it says you can, if you can get inside. Sorry, guys. If you can get inside, measure the distance. Measure, measure the radius. Yeah, of the cylindrical base. 
Do you know what I mean by cylindrical base? Just uh, the circular base, okay? Now, if you can't get in... Apologies for interrupting you last week. A reminder to students that detention and retention will take place today. That we'll on. Okay, guys. If you can't get into the building, if you can't get into the building, if you can't get into the building, uh, excuse me, if you can't get into the building, uh, measure the circumference. Measure the circumference and calculate the radius using L equals 2 pi multiplied by radius, 2 pi r. Okay, so now that that's done guys, okay, what I forgot to take into consideration if you're looking at this here, okay guys, what I forgot to take into consideration was I'm never at eye level, am I? When I used a clinometer, it was like the last question, I actually forgot about the base and I forgot that this is at height level, okay? So what you do is, after this, okay, you use tan theta equals the height of your building over the, the distance you're away from the base. Okay? And then you get H, and we'll call distance away from base, we'll call that D. Okay? So H equals D tan theta. And once you find out what H is, you have to add on the height of the person. Basically, exactly what we did in the spire question last. Okay? So it's very important that you do that. Alright, guys? Now, that is very difficult to do. I just wrote down, I wrote down all the measurements we took. And I also told you the procedure. The procedure is the tan part. The measurements is the, uh, the measurements is the clinometer. To using the measuring tape to measure distance to the wall, to the building, and then measuring the cylindrical base and finding the radius. Uh, procedure would be using the circumference to find the radius, and what else would be procedure would be using tan theta equals h over d is also a procedure. Now, there is one other method that will come up, and I need to show you this one, okay? There's another method for doing this, okay? The method in the uh, what we did in the first question was uh, it'll also ask you to pick measurements, okay? When we pick measurements, which is the answer to part B, you just pick numbers to use, okay? Now what I forgot to do here as well is I forgot to add on the radius, so it's actually h over 62. This means that h was 62 meters 62 meters then has to be added to the height of the person whoever the height of the person is it could be 1.8 meters that would bring the height of the building up to 63.8 meters now guys this way here one last way of doing this okay is this one here you have a height of a building okay and there's another way of doing it here's your building here Okay. Once again, you're given absolutely no measurements. You're just asked, "What do you go? How do you do it?" Okay. So here's how you do it. You start off at eye level, and you take the measurements to the top of the building in a straight line. Okay. It should be a straight line. Excuse me. Okay. So when it's a straight line, okay, what you have is this all the way to the top. Okay. Now, when you get closer, okay, and you're closer to the building, what happens next is you're going to be looking further up to get to the top, so your angle is going to increase. Now, there's a way of doing this one, and I'm just going to show you using numbers as opposed to using anything else. The height of the person is two meters. When she is, uh, sorry, when he is 50 meters away from the center, now we're just taking that as the center, okay? Uh, so he's 50 meters away, oh sorry, 
We don't even need that, excuse me. This is the great thing about this one. The great thing about the method I'm about to show you is you don't even need to get to the middle of the building. All we need to measure is how far did you go from one position to the other. Let's say he travels 30 meters from one position to the other. Using the kilometer in the first place, he had an angle of 50 degrees. When you go closer and you're making up the number, should you use a number bigger than 50 or smaller than 50? Bigger. Bigger, because the closer you get to the object, the higher you have to look up. Call this one uh, 65 degrees, okay? Now, if that's 65 degrees, what is this angle in here? What's this angle in here? 115, close though, it's 180. And if that's 115, what does this make this angle there, here? I'll make that one. Uh, 50 plus 115, 15 degrees. Okay guys, now you can use the sign rule where you get 30 meters divided by what guys? Sine what? 30 divided by sine. What angle is opposite 30? 15. Okay, equals. Uh, we want to know this side here. This side is the most important side because it's linked in both triangles. So what can we say then? We can say x over what? Sine 50. Cross multiply the sine 50 up. Will somebody do that in the calculator now? 30 sine 50 over sine 15. And what do you get? 30 sine 50. 88 points. Okay, Shh. lads. 88.79 equals x. Now guys, we're not looking for x as such. We're looking to find out what is the height y from Connor. We're looking to find out the height y from here to here. How would you do that now? You have a right angle triangle, don't you? You know that's 65 degrees. You know that's 88.7. And now you're looking for the height y. The height y does not include your two meters of height. So how do you get this one? What is it guys? Sine what? <laughs> Equals y over 88.7. What's the height y? 88.7 Sine 60? 5. What's that in the calculator? Anybody? 80.38 meters, yeah? Okay, guys. Now, you might be asked, shh, guys, you might be asked to, uh, you might be asked to, what's that word? You might be asked to describe this in language, and here's what you'd have to do. To describe this in language, you say, stand a certain distance away from this fire, measure the first angle. Measure how far you walk towards the spire. Measure your second angle. Yeah? Using this information, then use the sine rule to calculate. Now letter them off. Say that's MN. Calculate your length, MN. Then use a right angle triangle to calculate the length, Y, which is the height of the building without the height of the person taken into consideration. Once you do that, then you have to add the height of the person onto your answer to get 82.38 meters. Okay.